Visa and this is Visa Kai. In today's video, I want to get a bit more personal as I'm going to be telling you about one of the greatest struggles of my life. As many of you know, I'm a singer. Not so many of you probably know though that I used to be a professional opera singer. And the reason why I say that I used to be, we will be talking about in today's video. So grab a drink because this is going to be a long story. First of all, let's go back in time. And by that I mean exactly 13 years, back to when I was 10 years old. I was a super musical kid. I loved to dance, I loved to act, and most of all, I loved to sing. And apparently I was pretty decent at it, because people called me stuff like prodigy, they called me the star of the town, which, by the way, the town was like a village of 500 people, so that means nothing. And most of all, they called me the next big opera singer. I was a huge people pleaser. I thought that by doing the things that people tell me I should do, I would make them happy. And I thought that all I want is to make them happy. Well, I didn't know that all I wanted actually was that good old validation. Mm -hmm. So my silly 11 year old brain mistook all the praise and all the validation that I got for actual joy. And the dopamine rush I received every time I went on stage and got showered in compliments just made me want to keep doing it. So after I finished elementary school, I decided that I wanted to go to this middle school that had a special focus on music and arts. And I had additional music theory classes, choir, orchestra, all that stuff. And just a year after that, at 11 years old, I started taking professional opera singing classes. I sang in lots of choirs, I participated in singing competitions, and I had so many concerts. And oh boy, I loved it. Up until the point where I realized that I might not be as good as I thought I was. So living at the heart of classical music culture here in Central Europe meant that there was fierce competition. People here are so good. So when I went to this middle school with a focus on music and arts, I was practically surrounded by musical geniuses and prodigies. They were amazingly good at playing either the piano or the violin or even composing their own classical pieces. And I was just sitting there being like, Oh, I'm actually not that good. I realized that I am mediocre at best. And so the imposter syndrome hit. I thought to myself, what am I doing here? Why is everyone so much better than me? And why did no one tell me that people this talented exist? Welcome to the real world. <laughs> Up until that point, my brain had mistaken validation and praise and people pleasing for my passion and this backfired hard. So because I knew that I wasn't going to be an opera singer, I was not good enough for that, I had this internal conflict that I like to call gifted child syndrome. Because I was told as a kid that I was super talented, and then later on was confronted with the reality that there are so many people that are so much better than me, I built up an enormous amount of pressure and perfectionism that ate me up from the inside. And that's also why I resonate so much with anime characters like the protagonists of Shigatsu wa Kimi no Uso or Free, because both of these characters are also child prodigies that later on realize that something was holding them back from reaching their full potential. Realizing that you're not as gifted as you thought you were can actually lead to lots of pressure, lots of anxiety, and even depression. In my case, I couldn't be proud of myself anymore. Every time I achieved something, I placed well at a competition or I finished a concert, I couldn't take the compliments anymore. Every time someone came up to me and told me, oh, you are so great up there, I just kind of thought silently to myself, no, you're lying into my face, you know that I suck. Needless to say, that wasn't fun. So of course I had given up on my dream of becoming an opera singer, but what next? I had to think about what I wanted to do with my future, so I came up with a plan B. Becoming a music teacher. <sighs> so yeah, that was a pretty bad plan B. Um, I am not particularly fond of children. I wasn't back then, I am not now. I mean, back then it was a lot worse because I was a child and I hated people my age, so I, I knew that I never wanted to work with children and that has not really changed yet. But in my mind, I thought that the only thing I'm good at is music, so I have to do this. And keep in mind, I was at the top of my class back then. I had lots of other hobbies and lots of other things that I was good at. But to me, the only thing I could realistically do with the rest of my life was a career in music. No idea why I thought that. 
So regardless of the realization that my dreams will never come true and I will live a miserable life of being a music teacher, I auditioned for music university, yay! So in my town we have this really prestigious music university that a lot of the kids from my high school class were actually preparing to go to, and I auditioned for it as well. And I failed. It was super hard to get in, and I was only accepted on my second try, so I had already wasted a whole year. And after I got in, I thought this was what I always wanted, being in the university of my dreams. I was miserable. <laughs> it was absolutely awful, and I felt like my life was going downwards every single day. My opera singing professor was very strict with me, because clearly I was not living up to the standards of everyone else there, and she knew that I had potential, but also told me that I have to work a lot harder to actually reach that. My technique was never good enough, and there was this mental barricade that I could not get through no matter how hard I tried. I really didn't want to practice. Obviously, I felt like I wasn't good at what I did, so why would I want to do it in my free time? My performances became worse and worse, and to be honest, I really wasn't enjoying life anymore. I tried to avoid thinking about the future at all costs because the prospect of being a music teacher was just so dreadful to me. I felt like I was living life on standby mode, just kind of going with the flow and not ever pursuing what I actually wanted. Until I snapped after two years of music university. 2019 marked a huge turning point in my life. I finally made the decision to move out of my parents' house and take responsibility for how miserable I felt all the time. I started thinking seriously about the future and the prospect of becoming a music teacher when I realized that I really don't want that. So I made a risky decision and quit my major. At some point I just realized that even though change is scary, doing something that you really don't like for the rest of your life is even scarier. So I quit my major and I decided to go into English studies instead, which is an entirely different field. And I graduated a few weeks ago. And the day I told my opera singing professor that I wanted to quit, I felt like the weight of the world was falling off my shoulders. It was insane. And to my surprise, my vocal professor, my parents, my friends, essentially everyone around me was supportive of my decision. I didn't know that was possible. All my life I had been thinking that I need to please everyone else and I need to do music because that's what everyone expects from me. Well, I was wrong. All the expectations were really just in my head all along. And I pressured myself into following a path that I really didn't want to follow. And so I stopped doing that. And that's where everything changed. After that decision, I felt so much lighter, but also incredibly lost. After all, I was 21 and I had no idea what to do with the rest of my life because I just literally took the last 10 years of my life and threw them in the garbage bin. So that was two years ago. I'm 23 now, I have a degree in English studies and music is my hobby. I sing what I want to sing. I do my anime covers and I love karaoke and I sing for myself, but not to please anyone else. And most of all, I don't sing classical music. A few months after I quit my major, I realized that I actually don't really like classical music that much. As soon as I wasn't forced to sing classical music every day anymore, I stopped listening to it altogether. I guess I was wrong with that too. Seeing a pattern yet? Me too. Even now, I still struggle with being a people pleaser and doubting my own strengths. I often feel like nothing I do will ever be enough. But now I'm focusing on activities that I actually enjoy, like making YouTube videos. Although I still don't know what I really want to do with the future, now, nothing is holding me back from pursuing the things that I actually want to do, and that's an incredible feeling. What I learned from this whole ordeal is that life has so much more to offer than what we think. My eyes were really open that day when I told my professor that I wanted to quit music. She told me that it's great that you're realizing that now you're still so young, you still have so much time, please go do what you want to do. I genuinely thought that classical music was the only thing I could ever pursue as a career. And thinking back, it's just silly to think how much I limited myself. I kept overthinking and I tried to please everyone around me and in return, I sacrificed my own happiness. The biggest lesson I learned was that trying to make everyone else around me happy will never make me happy in the long run. Sure, those small rushes of dopamine from being complimented and praised are really nice, but true happiness can only come from within. So now I try to only think about what I enjoy instead of what makes my parents or friends or anyone proud. And one thing I really want you to know is that it's okay to give up sometimes. You're not a loser, you're not a failure just because you gave up on something. Even if you gave up on it 
five years, 10 years, or even 30 years after you started it. Because the only thing that really matters is that you do the things that make you truly happy and fulfilled. And it's never too late to start doing that.